G'day guys, this is Nick at Stridewise.com in Virginia at Beater's Leatherworks with Steve, the all-star cobbler from Beater's Leatherworks. How's Hello. it going? How's it going? Yeah, thanks Welcome. for, thank you. Thank you for having me here. My pleasure. This My is, pleasure. it's an amazing place. Uh, I filmed a couple of videos with Steve, you should check out, I'll put them in the description below. Uh, but basically I'm here trying to soak up as much knowledge as I can because Steve is an elite, elite shoe specialist Thank you, I appreciate it. and uh honestly i just this might seem like a dumb really boring common question but it's one that a lot of people ask what are the best ways to prevent blisters with new shoes especially new boots because that's where that's where the leather's thick and you're going to get tough break-ins from from what i see from my customers usually when they buy new shoes or boots most of the time it's the wrong size okay even though you know boot and shoe sizes are should they should be all in the you know uniform same sizes but with the same man, different manufacturers but it's not so different styles will fit you differently i always say if you wear a size 10 when you're buying new pair of shoes or boots try a nine and a half try a 10 try a 10 and a half see which one fits you better don't just always be stuck on your foot size because some some forms some different shapes some styles will fit you differently that's the most important thing because, you know, you get a lot of times people come in with shoes, either they're too big or they're too small. Well, that's my size. Well, you should have tried a size smaller or a size bigger to see which, you know, which one is a better fit. That's your first step. Second step, when, you're, when you buy new shoes, um, what I normally tell people, don't wear the brand new shoes on your full day of meetings, for example, okay? Wear it around the house, 30 minutes increments, one hour or so. This way, slowly, slowly, you'll break them in. And when the day comes that you need to wear them all day, you can wear them comfortably without any blisters. That's what causes blisters because the shoe is not broken into your foot shape yet. So if you're wearing it all day, you're doing you know, a couple of miles of walking, well, you're going to get blisters. So try to wear them around the house in increments of 30 minutes or 45 minutes or an hour. Slowly, slowly build that up until the boots or shoes are kind of semi-broken in. Then you can wear them all day to your to your meetings or wherever you want to go. Yeah, that's that's a good point. I had a pair of boots from uh, Dayton, which is this company in Canada, and it was just the worst break-in I've ever had in my life. And I had to, I, I got into the habit of, I would be able to wear them for maybe an hour, mm -hmm. and then I'd have to get out of them and let my feet heal and let the, the boot sort of recover. And then right. I'd try, to, try it again like a couple of days. And it took, it took like weeks for, to, for it to not hurt, but like that's, that sort of became a strategy for a lot of new boots. Like if it's a new pair of boots, I'm never sure if the break is gonna be bad or not. So I'll bring an extra pair of shoes with right, me when exactly, I go out with them. Exactly. And like, I'll, I'll take them off before the blister develops. It's yep. a, you know. I, uh, I bought a pair of uh, Alden Indies. Um, I wore them, you know, and I bought them from a friend of mine. And um, it, was, it was hurting my ankles. And, uh, and I called them up, I said, you know what? I don't want these boots, they're not comfortable. He's like, well, you got to be patient. You got to wear them for a little bit, you know, and then try not to lace them up all the way. Um, believe it or not, that was about eight years ago when I bought them. I wear them every day now, except for today, because I had a little issue with them. I got to find a good cobbler to fix them. <laughs> and uh, and I didn't. I don't lace them all the way. And now they're so comfortable and they're broken and they're like they they fit like gloves. I swear. And it just takes time sometimes to to kind of break them in a little bit. And after they're broken in. You should you should have no problem whatsoever. So, would you agree that there is that sometimes you won't find the right shoe from a brand? Like like I'm talking about different lasts here, right? Like different kinds of different lasts, and sometimes as much as you love the look of a boot, their last just isn't the right last listen, for your foot. Listen, you're very lucky if you find something right off the shelf to fit you 100. percent It's never the case. It's usually you have to go through that breaking period. You have to stretch them a little bit. You have to put tongue pads. You have to put heel, heel slips in the back. So very rarely you'll find a manufacturer with the right size last, right shape, you know, last that fits you 100%. Very rarely. So it's like the good, the, the bad news is you're unlikely to find a shoe that fits you perfectly. The good news is that because it's leather, even if it isn't perfect, it'll mold to the shape of your foot kind right. of anyway, so probably. So I, I speak for my Aldens when I when I say that I had to put some inserts in there to take up a little bit of room. I wear a 10 and a half, the boots were 11. So they were a little bit larger on me. So now I put an inserts in there that, that fits me perfectly now. Now, could I downsize the 10 and a half? I could have probably done that, but you know what? I stayed with 11, so. All right, so let's 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 listify a little bit. We've got first tip tip to avoid getting blisters. Make sure you're absolutely certain you have the right, right shoe size. size. Yep. Second one can be be patient because eventually they like wear them for short periods of time. Yep. Now talk about 
heel sl you, got, you got insets to reduce the volume inside this shoe. That can be important if you think you got the right size, but it's still not quite the right size, and um, you need so to. So simple, simple like Dr. Scholl's, for example, like yeah. padded insoles. Once you, they take up a little bit of room. They give you a little bit of cushion. They push your foot back a little bit so the heel doesn't slip as much. Mm -hmm. um, if the heel's slipping too much, maybe some tongue pads. Even though tongue pads are mainly for like dress shoes, something like this, you put the tongue pad right here and it pushes your foot back a little bit that grips the heel a little better. Now you can still do that for boots. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter, as long as it's got a tongue right there and, it, and if your heel's slipping too much, put a little tongue pad right here that'll push it back, it's more a little snug right here and, and the heel fits a little better. So if I've got a new pair of boots, how do I know if uh, to prevent blisters I should be using an insert or a tongue pad or a heel pad? Like how do I kind of decide what I need, if I need anything at all? When you're tying the boots and it's like this, this close together, well that's not a proper fit. You should have about, maybe about a good half inch I would say. So now, if you're, if you're tying it and you're here, get some inserts, what's going to happen is your, your foot's going to push up a little bit and you're going to have that little bit of a gap like that. Okay, that's a good fit there. Mm -hmm. So that's one, I, that's one idea if it's too tight. But the problem is that some people have skinny ankles, you know, and, and no matter what you put in there, you're still not going to get that tight fit like that. It's a matter of just looking for a last shape, a manufacturer that you're comfortable with. That's it. If you find one, stick to it. Okay, last question. What about these people that say I'll put on my shoes and I'll like stand in a bath for like an hour or something and that'll get the leather wet and then it'll dry around the shape of my foot like a pair of jeans? So, so in the army, that's what they used to do. I don't know if they do that anymore, but when they gave you new boots, you trek through puddles and, and streams to wet them. That way it, it's easier to stretch because the leather is soft. I don't know if that's good for dress boots, you know, but I wouldn't do it personally. Doesn't it, yeah, doesn't it like reduce the lifespan of the leather, makes it more likely to putrefy and rot and that kind of stuff? The boots are meant to be worn in inclement weather, yes, but not to stand in the puddle of water or to stand in the, in the shower. It can damage the fiber. Uh, yeah, I mean, you just don't do that, you know. But they just own it if they want to do it, you know. But if you want to wet them, Try the rubbing alcohol and, and the water solution to wet the uppers. 50% water, 50% alcohol, right. spray the boot with that. You can spray the boot, you can even spray the inside if you want, it's not gonna hurt it, you know, because what happens is that when the leather gets soft, it's easier to stretch. So that'll give it that'll give it a chance to kind of break into your foot a little, little faster. That's what I would do. Spray the inside, spray the outside, 50% water, 50% alcohol, walk around in that until it dries. There you go. And that can help. And then once it dries, if you're concerned about the leather drying, you can apply some moisturizers afterwards. So Yeah, the alcohol can dry out the leather, but yeah, keep some conditioner on hand and um, but, but it should be good to go. the alcohol, if you use the alcohol over and over and over for years and years and years, maybe, maybe that might damage the leather, but doing it a couple of times is not going to do it. Yeah, it's not going to do it, but it's always good to moisturize the shoe or the boot anyway, so... All right. All right. That's that's pretty pretty good list of tips. All right. Cool. How to prevent blisters. Make sure you subscribe to Beto's Leatherworks, by the way. Uh, that channel is in the description below. It's a uh, just gigantically popular channel and deserves to be. It's really cool. This guy's a genius. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Oh, and there's an article in the description below as well if you want to see this all written down. Um, that's it. Subscribe. See you later.